This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Welcome to another edition of Silent Voices, the only program in America that you, the viewer, can voice your opinion on the child welfare system. Beside me is Maria. I'm Dennis Lawrence. And, uh, you know, you know, Maria, recently we attended a rally in Lansing, July 27th. Uh, that was put on by Alexandra Cervantes and Adina Caro. And these two young ladies put on a very good rally, I thought. And um, uh, today we're going to go back in our show and kind of reflect, look at some pictures from the rally. Uh, we're going to have a couple speakers on at the rally. So, uh, uh, Maria, what were your thoughts when you went down there uh, for this rally? Well, this particular rally was really exciting in the in the fact that one of the first times in, in that I can remember at one of our events, protests and such, that we had the media there. Yes, we had Channel 6, uh, 10, and Channel 47 from Lansing, Michigan there. That's pretty exciting because it's really unprecedented in our fight. I think we got the point across that, you know, what we would like to see happen. I think that we were able to show everybody a different side of, of the children who are not being heard not just the you know the parents grandparents aunts uncles and the people who have really been failed by the system but the ones who have really been failed were the children and i think we we're successfully able to get that point yeah, across too and we had a pretty good showing um uh, freebree from the freebree foundation was there that was that medical marijuana case from michigan last year uh W. Williams, a grandmother that's been fighting. There was uh, some other grandparents there that are fighting to get their children. And, um, you know, I thought our voices were uh, really heard. They, you know, uh, it, it's nice to see that the media did come out and uh, filmed us and uh, what, what we were fighting for. So, um, now we put together some uh, stills of our trip at the rally. Uh, the people that came out to join together to use their voices on the child welfare systems and to be heard and, and speak. Uh, and I want to go to that cut right now of uh, just some of the stills, the pictures of the festivities of the, that day. So let's go take a look at that.
I think it was a very successful rally, and we were able to get the message out that day. One of the speakers at this rally was a former foster child, Trinity Sleek. Um, and, and this isn't the first foster child that we've had on, and I'm hoping it won't be the last one because these children's voices need to be heard. It's always a really good thing to hear from the children that are affected by the system. I mean, we speak out, you know, as the parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, but for the children to speak out is, is a very, very powerful thing. Trinity, Trinity Sleek, I, I thought she did a wonderful job. There was a little crying in there. And, uh, you know, uh, after, after she got done speaking, I spoke with her and, um, once again, this foster child told me the same thing the other foster children had that we've had on the program, that their parents didn't do anything wrong to be separated or traumatized for life. So let's go to that video of Trinity uh, speaking at the rally July 27th in Lansing in front of the Capitol. I don't think there was a dry eye in the house when Trinity spoke. That was a very, very powerful, she's a brave, just a really incredible young woman. Excuse my shaky voice, as you can see. I wasn't prepared for today, but I thought I had my stuff together. Thought I would walk up here, say my story, and prove that I made it through this strong. But it took a lot. They removed me from my mom's care at the age of 14. They accused her of being a drug addict because of a skin condition that the doctors unfortunately could not identify. It took a long time for her to finally find out what it is, and to this day, she tries so hard to keep from breaking out and wears makeup to cover it up. And everyone tells her she's beautiful the way she is. And when they removed me, they put me with my three-time felon for drugs father, who had just been married a few years before to a woman who abandoned her children and could not physically have them back due to the fact of her choices and when they put me with him I complained to my mom all the time every visit mom I don't want to stay at dad's house it's not the same compared to a visit so she tried her best to find me a better place. And by doing so, it had been a friend that she had worked with in the past. And I had known her on somewhat basis. And with them newly being married and having their own kids, we figured it would be a good place. Foster, let me rephrase that, CPS pushed through the original standardized standards for someone to get their foster care license so they could see that I was here and thought it was best when in reality I was hurt on many different levels. I was sexually assaulted by my foster father who was an ex-marine and unfortunately I am now 17 and it took me so long to finally disclose to my mom because I was afraid I would never see my true family again. Because that night he had told me if I said anything he would make sure I would never see my family again. Recently my mom has pushed and pushed for this to hit the prosecutor's desk and it's been posted to many and that is also why I'm here today because I want my voice to be heard because I'm hoping to save someone else.
from being hurt by those who don't care and don't deserve children to be in their hands, who serve a 14-year-old alcohol and think it's okay, and tell them that their mother was a drug addict when in reality all she wanted was help for housing that was fit for her children. And it was wrong because they made up lies and put me against my own mother and my family. And all I gotta say is I do love you, Mom. The, as parents that do love their kids and we don't get to see them and we don't get to protect them once again I want to thank Trinity for coming forward and having the courage to speak uh, and Maria as I said earlier that these children, if they, you know, when I ask if they had been abused in their home, that their parents had did something wrong for them to be taken, the answer has always been no. I would like to hear from the mother's side of the story. We want to thank Tammy McQueen, the mother of Trinity, um, for, for coming forward as well and not only supporting her daughter but telling her side of the story and what took place um, in, in their case. Let's hear from Tammy how the system tore her and her daughter apart. I heard CPS and their shenanigans. I've been a mom for 32 years. When they took her, I'd already been a mom of 27. I know what I'm doing. I'm protecting her, teaching her, and guiding her through this life that has become nothing but a mockery of intelligence in the world. From the society's pictures on magazines to what a girl should be, to what happens, how other people's children talk or act. You don't have to do what they do and guide her through that. And if that's what I'm guilty for is being poor and being appropriate, I apologize, but I'm not gonna apologize for what they did to us. They broke our little family. It wasn't big. Me and my daughters was a, was a family. My oldest child, like I said, right now, 32 years I've been momming around. I've been in and out of the schools, up and down the stairs, sitting there, sitting in that office, defending my children when they were Right, and defending them even if they were wrong, as long as they didn't lie for the proper reasons. That's what you do when you're a mom. They decided because of my disorder that I was a drug addict. Um, as this whole thing came full circle, and they sent out another investigator for the foster care parents, nowhere in my file does it say a damn thing about drugs that I ever had any affiliation. Nowhere in that file does it even represent anything except for I was poor and homeless. Isn't that ironic? That's what I asked for help for, help getting housing. And they took my child and placed her with her father, who's a three-time felon, who had, when we split up, had physically abused me. He went to prison for drinking and driving because third per se equals 15 times drinking and driving in 11 years, and that's okay. That's okay for her to be there. It's okay for her to have al access to alcohol and other things. With a step-parent who doesn't even have her own children, cannot have them because she's with my ex. That's our story. And any time I would say something wasn't okay, they would change the rules. They would change the rules every time we went to court. They said I needed counseling. They said my attorney had told me I had to have one of those plans. I didn't see one. He said, get the plan, follow it, you'll be fine. What is this plan? I asked him, you know what they did? Went to the back room, sketched some stuff on a piece of paper. Here's your plan, do it. So the next time we go to court, and I'm still asking for help with housing, they're saying, you gotta do eight classes of this, 
Oh, and by the way, because you're, you left a domestic situation, you better take some domestic violence classes too. In the meantime, they're telling her something different. I'm complying with nothing. I'm upside down, um, struggling all the way, trying to figure out how to get these visits, trying to do all of this. Each time we complained, they took more away from our visits. We started being able to be outside in a park. Then when we're locked in their office, where we couldn't even have a conversation. A 14-year-old child does not have the same entertainment level as a three or four-year-old. Parenting classes do not apply to 14-year-old children. They apply to toddlers. But I took it. Did everything they asked, except for get a job right then because it wasn't feasible. By the way, I can't work today because I have to take a class. By the way, they've changed my visit. I can't come in. How long do you think I'd really be employed? That was the, the synopsis. There was no gain, gain here. We went through this for over a year. We struggled. They lied to her. They would lie to me. They would personally go out of their way and not have, let us have our visits. Am I innocent by any means? Not always. I'm a human. I'm, I'm human. I make mistakes. But I don't hurt my child. I defend and protect them. Nobody's child should be hurt like she was. Nobody's child. She wasn't a toddler, but she was easy to get along with. That made her easy to place. That made her a profit margin. That's how I feel. And that's what they did. The money they used to... Supposedly, it's our taxpayers' money. When they returned it to me, I also got a bill for over $3,000. That I had to have suspended because they couldn't maintain that in her counseling on her income. That was their answer. By the way, you went to court, you lost $3,000 to your child to have a nice day. Um, we went through a lot of things. This wasn't part of the plan. We struggled today. We're still surviving. Every year about Mother's Day, it was May 6th, 2012, they took my child. 14 years old, if life was bad at 14, you know what? She knew how to leave. Bank and I taught her that. She didn't have to stay there. Life wasn't that bad. We were just poor. That's what we're guilty of. And for that, her price was the ultimate. Her innocence. That's wrong. That's so wrong. And we're just over here building every day. Every day in secrets, they keep you sick. We're not keeping their secrets. We're not going to keep their secrets and stay sick. Because we know how to survive. And with that, we'll make it to the top. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. As a mother myself, I know the trauma of being separated from my children. I'm glad to see this family, you know, you and your daughter are reunited. That really gives all of us mothers hope. And thank you so much for sharing. We will be back right after these messages. If you would like to be a guest on Silent Voices, contact us at miparentalrights at gmail.com. That's miparentalrights at gmail.com. <laughs>
Dorian Lee Harper and Wanda Sue Larson, both 57, face charges of intentional child abuse inflicting serious injury, false imprisonment, and cruelty to animals, officials said. Larson also faces charges of willful failure to discharge her duty as a public official. She's a supervisor with the Union County Department of Social Services. The department quote, strives to help families support themselves and to provide care and protection for children, the disabled, and the elderly. The social services worker and a hospital nurse are behind bars after a North Carolina deputy spotted their 11-year-old foster child shivering and handcuffed to the front porch with a dead chicken around his neck, authorities said Saturday. The boy and four adopted children in the home south of Monroe were taken away Friday and are in the custody of an outside agency, according to Union County Sheriff Edie Cathy. The discovery came Friday when a Union County deputy responding to a complaint about an animal next door saw the boy on the porch. The child was secured to the front porch at the ankles by what appeared to be a pair of handcuffs, according to the Union County Sheriff's Office. A dead chicken hung around his neck. Moments later, authorities said Harper appeared on the porch and asked the deputy why was he there. A child inside the house opened the front door, letting out several large dogs. The dogs chased the deputy back to his patrol car. When additional officers arrived at the house, authorities searched the residence. They removed five children ages 8, 9, 11, 13, and 14 from the home. Harper reportedly lived at the residence with Larson. They had adopted four of the children and were serving as foster parents for the 11-year-old found on the porch. It was also reported the boy broke his wrist once while trying to escape. The child also had a two-inch scar on his face after Harper allegedly sliced him with a knife. The man is also accused of using an electrical wire to burn the boy's face near his eye. The couple never took the boy to a hospital for treatment of his wounds. Dorian Lee Harper and Wanda Sue Larson, you are on the Michigan for Parental Rights Wall of Shame. Hello, I'm a child protective worker. I want to thank you, the viewers, for watching this week. You can catch us next week, same time, same channel. Until next week, my friends, remember, your, your voice, voice can, can make, make the difference. difference.